And so it begins for Bitcoin, the relief rally of promise. Fingers crossed anyway. And I know what you're probably thinking, Lark, weren't you saying that last week we were going to get a relief rally? Yeah, we got a fake out, not a breakout, unfortunately. In today's video, I want to break down the charts for you. Also, some interesting inflation data to look at. Some interesting adoption news, too. So make sure to stick around to the end of the video to get all the goods. Also, the details on who the heck has been selling their Bitcoin recently. And it's a pretty surprising cohort of people. Also, thanks to everyone for asking where the heck I've been over the last week in the uh, comment section. I've had the flu. It's been pretty gnarly. Anyway, I'm back to make some videos for you guys. I missed you all, so hope you enjoy today's video. My name's Lark, by the way, in case you are new around here, do think about hitting that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the things that are happening in the cryptocurrency space. And of course, leave a little thumbs up button if you do enjoy this kind of content. By the way, if you are a cryptocurrency trader, you need to get yourself an account over on BitGet. You can trade spot markets, you can trade futures markets, and if you use the link down below in the description of this video right here, then you can get also up to $4,163 in trading and deposit bonuses when starting your account over on BitGet and also get 15% off of your trading fees. So do check that out if you are a trader. Now let's go ahead and get into what the heck's been happening in crypto over the last few days here. So finally, finally, we have broken our downtrend. So nine straight red weekly candles for Bitcoin. We finally closed a green candle for Bitcoin after the longest downtrend in history for Bitcoin. Exciting times to be living in. Now, we did, of course, see strong selling pressure come in on this candle here, pushing it right back down, but we still did close the end of the week as a green candle. So that's a positive thing. After so much red in the market, finally getting a green candle definitely feels good. Hopefully, we can put in another green candle next week. Now, taking a closer look at the charts here, currently we are seeing this nice daily candle breaking out, pushing us a bit higher. Now, what happened last week? Right, we got very excited here last week, right? We was talking about that. Oh, exciting. Looks like we might be getting our relief rally coming in. Stock markets are looking bullish. Crypto's looking bullish. Everyone's really excited. And then blammo, big giant red candle, basically erasing the entire positive move that we had earlier in the week. Then the price just basically slouched sideways for a few days. Now we're starting to pick up a little bit. What's interesting though, basically we had a breakout to come back down and retest this trend line right here. So that's pretty interesting. Basically a breakout, come back down, test the trend line, start moving back up. Now that's technically a bullish move if of course we do continue momentum here on this uh, green candle that we're currently trying to form up. MACD still positive on the daily, still trending upwards. So we're still moving in the right direction on that indicator here. Also, one thing to note here though, the volume is unbelievably low. So this current breakout that we're having for Bitcoin is on the back of very, very low volume. So we've seen two super low volume days with almost nothing happening for the price of Bitcoin. Now we are getting this breakout, but it's a breakout coming on very thin books at the moment. We might see that pick up over the next uh, 20 hours and finish a much higher volume daily candle. We shall see, of course, how that plays out. But if we don't have the volume backing up this move, well, it may not be such a strong move in the end. However, if we can cement this move, if we can see a bit of a decent volume pick up here, we could start talking about finally making our move up to retest some of these key lines here for Bitcoin. And of course, what happens with Bitcoin if it goes up? It drags the rest of the cryptocurrency market up with it. And that's not to say we're going to see huge rallies uh, for a lot of the altcoins in their Bitcoin pairs necessarily. Yes, some of them will outperform, but a lot of those are going to continue to suffer in Bitcoin terms during a major Bitcoin rally during this bearish period overall. Now, what we want to see, of course, is a rally at least up here to around $38,000. One, that's an area that we've seen huge amounts of price support recently. 
uh, this year. So that would then be an interesting area, of course, in terms of now flipping into an area of price resistance. It's also our major downtrend line where we see that coming in to connect here. It would also approximately line up with where we're going to see the 200 day simple moving average. So if you want to see the markets actually reverse and actually flip into a bullish state, we need to cross over these two lines, that orange line, that blue line. Yep, that's what we need to do short term. Now, if we fail to do that, that is our relief rally. So that basically we move up to here, everybody gets mega bullish, everybody starts going super long again. We're running into resistance, running into the downtrend line, et cetera, et cetera. Markets slam back down. But that rally up to here is a pretty significant move. That's a 20, 25% move for Bitcoin. And if that moves that much for Bitcoin, that means that's a 50, 60, 70, 80% move for top 20 altcoins. That's potentially multi 100% moves for very low cap altcoins. So use that information as you will. Now, what we are looking for for the rest of the week, what could be a catalyst to push the markets further is the upcoming inflation data for the month of May. So that should be coming out later this week. Now, if it comes out and it shows that inflation has fallen once again, the markets are probably going to react relatively favorably to that. It will show that the Federal Reserve's interest rate hikes are working, that their current level of aggressiveness is working, and that we're moving in the right direction, not the wrong direction on inflation. Now, if it comes out that inflation has gone back up, I would expect the markets to not react very favorably at all. In fact, I'd probably guess we're going to see a panic run across the markets as people go, oh no, it's getting worse than we thought it was going to be, right? Or if the inflation numbers come in and they're not as much as is anticipated, which is what happened last month. Last month, we got the inflation numbers. Inflation potentially peaked. It has come down, but it didn't come down as much as people thought it was going to come down. So the markets didn't react super favorably to that. They were okay, but they didn't react super favorably. If we see that again, I would expect a similar situation, more just lackluster meh in the markets. But if we get some good inflation uh, numbers showing that we did have a significant reduction, that would be a positive thing. So we'll obviously keep an eye on that story as it comes up throughout the week. Got to say, though, I do love green candle days. There's been so much sideways action. And look, we're still kind of in a sideways price action. Realistically, Bitcoin's kind of just been ranging between $28,000 and $31,000, a little bit on either side for the past three freaking weeks. But still, Bitcoin up 4% in 24 hours does feel good. It does feel good. Now, let's talk about who's been selling off their Bitcoin. One of the big sellers recently has been the miners. This is pretty surprising data because normally, normally, Miners sell into strength, not into weakness. So we saw, for example, big miner sell-offs happening in early 2021, late 2020. As the market started pumping, miners started dumping supply that they've been basically stacking up for years. And they finally offloaded that supply into the strength of the market. Now, we did see them selling some of their supply uh, in 2021 when the market turned around. And we had that big drop down. But now we've seen this is the biggest sell-off that we've had since the main sell-off back here. And of course, one of the biggest sell-offs we've had in years of minor stock. So these guys are getting rid of their Bitcoin and the current price levels. Perhaps their anticipation is things are going to get worse. Normally, miners save their Bitcoin if they don't need to be selling it for cash to run the machines, pay investors, et cetera, et cetera. Normally, they hodl that Bitcoin and wait to sell it at a later date for more money. Makes sense, right? If you don't need to sell it, why would you sell it? This would show that definitely some of the miners, at least, are looking at the markets and thinking, it's not awesome right now. Get out now. And then, you know, it's mine more, obviously, but get out now. Before the price goes down, they need to lock in that cash profit. They need to lock in, you know, the ability to pay the electricity bills and pay their investors and all that stuff. So perhaps that's what we're seeing here. But this has definitely added a lot of sell pressure into the market, 
with you know thousands of Bitcoin coming in from miners being sold. More great adoption news for Bitcoin. Well, really, the wider cryptocurrency market. Binance has teamed up with one of Dubai's retail giants. So now you will be able to spend your crypto at 29 malls and 13 hotels in Dubai. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm going to have to go and do some video vlogging when we go to Dubai uh, later this year. So that's going to be cool. That's going to be really cool. Nice. I'm looking forward to spending some crypto in the mall. Why not? It'll be fun. It'll be fun. That'll be cool. This is great adoption stuff. You know, you might think, oh, it's only, you know, the UAE. It's only 29 malls and 13 hotels. We've covered so many stories like this this year. Every single time a business puts their hands up and says, we're going to accept crypto here. It normalizes it. It social proofs it. It makes it real for people. One of the biggest things, you can't spend your crypto anywhere, man. You can spend your crypto all over the place. You can buy stuff at malls. You can pay for hotels. You can book airline tickets. You can buy luxury goods. You can buy properties. You can pay your taxes in a lot of places using crypto. It's taken off, man. It's taken off. The adoption is going absolute bonkers recently. This is just another little one in the uh, feather in the cap, you know? Final story for today. Turkey's annual inflation soars to 73.5% in May, highest since 1998. Wow. Just, wow. If you're in Turkey, you guys need a hug. That's crazy, man. Wow. If you're not in Turkey, if you're in a Western country, you know, somewhere, New Zealand, Australia, United States, Europe, whatever. You might think, oh, we talk about, you know, inflation in the USA. It's 8.5% or whatever it's at right now. That's so crazy, man. 73.5%. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if you have $100 and basically that $100 is worth like, well, dramatically less in a year's time at that kind of inflation rate. That kind of inflation rate, your $100 turns into like 25 bucks within a year. It's insanity. It's absolute insanity. It's just economic devastation. If you have a regular job, you're trying to just get by and you know live your life, you have a situation where every month the prices are going up 6 or 8%. But guess what? Your wages aren't going to be going up 6 or 8% per month. Sometimes people in the West have a hard time understanding, well, you know, Bitcoin's so volatile and why would you want to have it as a, you know, inflation hedge and all this stuff. And look, see, inflation's up in the U.S. right now, but Bitcoin's down. And that's because Bitcoin's following the larger market cycle. But the reality is people all around the world have understood the value proposition of Bitcoin for a very long time. Turkey's one of the highest adopting countries for cryptocurrencies, along with other countries like Nigeria, for example, huge crypto adoption country, also a country with huge inflation problems. People around the world get it because they have to suffer the realities of inflation, 73.5%. It's insanity. It's crushing, soul-destroying inflation. 8.5% is child's play. It's bad. It's also very bad inflation. But that, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. Anyway, just want to share that with you. Oh, inflation, dude. Anyway, thanks so much for watching today's video. Do let me know what you think about any of this stuff down below in the comment section. Thanks so much and peace out till next time.